guys thanks for clicking you guys are doing great so islamic advice you need doing any hard times so whenever you have an hard times these are the powerful islamic advice needed so let's check it out prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said O oh people do not wish to meet the enemy and ask allah for safety and if you meet them have patience and know that paradise lies under the shadows of swords in the fast-paced modern world it can be challenging to find peace and contentment in the middle of life's storms. Instead of blaming your circumstances and things outside of your control, the real solution would be to turn towards your Creator that mm -hmm. has a plan, a better plan mm -hmm. for you. In this video, we will look into seven practical pieces of advice to overcome hardships and get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. I challenge you to watch this video until the end. So do not skip, do not be weak. Advice number one patience and trust in Allah. The Quran in Surah Anfal verse 30 says that Allah is the best of planners. Allah wants us to have patience and trust in His plan. Let us go back in the time of Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, a man tested with severe afflictions, yet he stood firm in his faith. Despite enduring unimaginable suffering and physical pain, he remained patient, putting his trust entirely in Allah's decree. Through his story, we learn that patience is not just passive acceptance, waiting for Allah to provide a solution by doing nothing, but an active endurance coupled with trust in Allah's decree. As Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in an authentic hadith, tie your camel first and then put your trust in Allah, meaning that do the best with the skills, resources, and tools Allah has provided you and leave the rest to Allah, the all-knowing. When you have an exam, about to do a business negotiation or have to deal with a friend or family member, do not fall in the trap of overthinking and the illusion of control. Simply do what is required with excellence and put your trust in the Almighty God. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said, He who Allah wishes for good, he will firstly inflict him with hardship. Thus, a believing Muslim picks up from calamities and constructively embraces the situation in stride. In the face of difficult circumstances, we can find peace knowing that Allah's plan is the best for you, even though it may not look like it on the surface. By turning to Allah through regular prayers and supplications and understanding that hardships are tests of faith, we can turn hard times into opportunities for getting closer to our Creator. Advice number two, constant remembrance of Allah. In hardships and calamities, it is natural to get swept away by the affliction of the moment. During such trials of faith, unless we are careful, Satan can inject fear and plant doubts in our hearts and minds. The act of turning to Allah through prayer and remembrance becomes a source of peace for Muslims that experience hardships. The Quran in Surah Baqarah verse 152 teaches us, Remember me, and I will remember you. How many times a day do you constantly remember Allah? In the bus, car, or train? When walking on the street, when preparing food, when doing exercise? When you increase this in your daily life, you will feel deeply transformed. Temporary and worldly things like the newest phone model, the next sports game, or a news event will seem mundane because your heart and mind are busy to serve and remember Allah, who is greater than all of those things, people, and events. Starting and ending the day with phrases like, Subhan Allah, Glory be to Allah, Alhamdulillah, All praises due to Allah, and Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater increases your mindfulness and gratitude. Additionally, reading and understanding the meanings of Surah Al-Fatiha and Ayat Al-Kursi can build your God consciousness, taqwa. Ask yourself, do you know the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha, which you read numerous times a day in your daily prayers? This will be a good starting point. Start by reading or listening to the translation of the Quran to not only understand its meaning, but also to absorb the beauty of Allah's words in your heart. Do not feel helpless, even when all doors appear to have been closed. As true believers, we should never let feelings of helplessness succumb us. Advice number three, acts of kindness and charity, sadaka. In Islam, acts of kindness and charity, sadaka, is very important to cleanse our bad deeds and wealth. To be able to put your selfishness and ego aside for the greater good is a sign of a strong believer and an opportunity for the not so strong believer to build him on. Don't let the lack of money or other resources make you think that you can't contribute. 
Engaging in acts of kindness and charity can be as simple as offering yeah. a smile, helping a neighbor, or volunteering at your local mosque. Donating your time, skills, or knowledge to a noble cause can be equally impactful. Generosity was among the countless good qualities of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the most generous of people, and he used to be most generous in Ramadan. One day, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam offered prayer in the mosque, and then hurriedly went to his house and returned immediately. A companion asked why he left, and he replied, I left a piece of gold at home which was given for charity, and I dislike letting it remain a night in my house, so I brought it to the mosque to distribute. Al-Bukhari, our worldly possessions are bounties from Allah, who is the most generous. Muslims believe that everything originates from Allah, and everything will return to Him. Thus, it is logical to behave as if that which we possess is merely a loan, something we are obligated to preserve, protect, and ultimately share. Before Advice 4 know this, exclusive content requests, self-improvement, and much more can be found on the Brave Dean Patron in the description and comments. Your support will help us continue making valuable content, insha'Allah. We will update the Patron over time. Advice 4. Seeking Beneficial Knowledge Our religion encourages its believers to pursue knowledge, even if it is far beyond your capabilities, but we must be careful in this process. There exists knowledge that brings you closer to your Creator, and there is knowledge that will distance you from your Creator. May Allah protect us from knowledge that is not beneficial. The best of the believers, who face uncertainties, are those who wants to solve their problems through knowledge. Alhamdulillah, our religion is a very practical one, that is clear-cut, and provides solutions and benefits to all aspects of our lives. Through studying the Quran, Hadith, and the works of Islamic scholars, we can find not only answers to our questions, but also a sense of purpose. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized the importance of knowledge, stating in an authentic Hadith narrated by Ibn Majah, Seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. However, while seeking knowledge, you have to be careful. In today's world, seeking knowledge is not limited to religious texts, but extends to various fields of study, including science and arts. While some forms of knowledge can seem like it is not harmful, it can be the means to distracting us from our main purpose, which is to worship and remember our Lord. This is not to say that you should restrict yourself to learning about topics like physics, medicine, technology, or programming. Quite the opposite, as they have been major Muslim scientists and experts in these fields in the golden age of Islam. As Muslims, just as we restrain ourselves from certain types of foods and drinks, we should also be careful with what we feed our minds. There are many ideologies and so-called experts and gurus on the internet who claim to know the secrets of the universe, success and wealth. But as Allah says in Surah Kaf, verse 46, wealth and children are but adornment of the worldly life, but the enduring good deeds are better to your Lord for reward and better for one's hope. This means that all knowledge that promotes success in this world, whether that is money, status, and fame, are empty and meaningless in the eyes of Allah. Instead, you should seek reputable educational resources, attend lectures, and participate in discussions. You can join our Discord server, link down in the description and comments, where we strive to share beneficial knowledge, start meaningful discussions, and gain insights on Hadith and Quranic verses. Together, with our sincere intentions, we will use the knowledge as a means to get closer to our Creator, insha'Allah. Advice number five, maintaining strong relationships. In the glorious Quran, Allah talks about the significance of maintaining strong relationships, both within families and communities. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a beautiful hadith, you will be with those whom you love. In recent times, the conflict between Palestine and Israel has increased in tension. Hundreds of innocent brothers and sisters, young and old, have been killed. Properties, schools, hospitals, and mosques have been damaged. The noise of their cries of help can be heard from miles away. But unfortunately, most Muslim nations remain silent. Everyone is following the news on Israel and Palestine, and they all seem to have an opinion. You cannot understand the brutal truth about this bloodshed by simply watching the news or browsing Google. War is never what they make it look in movies and TV shows. It's a dark, gruesome atmosphere. Be wary when raising your opinion. 
Pray for this to end and focus on what is in your control. The war will end. The leaders will shake hands. The old woman will keep waiting for her martyred son. That girl will wait for her beloved husband. And those children will wait for their heroic father. I don't know who sold our homeland, but I saw who paid the price. It's sad how people are still making jokes about war and turning it into memes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, He is not a believer whose stomach is filled while his neighbor goes hungry. Muslims must act in a way so that each member feels valued and supported. In the modern world, we should strive to build strong relationships inside and outside of our homes. This requires that we take action and that we communicate with empathy and respect even towards non-Muslims. It involves listening and understanding. In these hard times of our Ummah, we need this more than ever. Advice number six, maintaining your physical health. In Islam, taking care of our physical health is a practice recommended by our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While it is not a pillar of faith, taking care of our bodies makes sense because it is an amana, trust from Allah and it is our responsibility to preserve this trust by keeping ourselves healthy and strong. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about the importance of being in a good physical shape. He said, A strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than a weak believer, while there is good in both. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged wrestling in the mosque. Wrestlers would practice in the mosque grounds, promoting physical fitness and strength among the companions. This tradition illustrates the importance Islam places on physical health and well-being. When it comes to your diet, a Muslim should always eat and drink from clean sources and in moderation. As the Quran guides us in Surah Araf verse 31, Eat and drink but be not excessive. Indeed, he likes not those who commit excess. By maintaining your physical health, you not only honor your body as a trust from Allah, but also follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Advice number seven, optimism for the future. Islam teaches us that hope and optimism should always be present in the believer's heart. The Quran, in Surah at tawbah verse 51, Allah says, nothing will befall us except what Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector. Let the believers put all their trust in Allah. Even in the middle of hardships, a believer should have a hopeful outlook. These seven pieces of advice are rooted in the teachings of Islam. Each lesson is a reminder so that you can embody these into your life. Ask yourself this, do you follow any of the advice mentioned in this discussion? If not, then start to practice them from today. If this has helped you gain insight, then share your thoughts below. If you don't know what to comment, just write Free Palestine to let me know that you made it to the end. You can also join our Discord server, link in the description, where we help each other to strengthen our hearts and minds to serve Allah the Almighty. May Allah save our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Amin. That was a powerful one, guys. One needs to listen to this video over and over again just to boost you, just to, you know, put you back on track. Whenever you are facing difficult times and you are worried, you are confused, you want to lose hope in Allah, you don't know what to do. These are the steps you need to take. Like he said, you need to put your trust in God. That's number one thing, trust him. And trust him and be confident in the God you're serving. And no matter the situation you find yourself, he will see you through. There's no situation we are in that God does not know, Allah does not know. Allah sees it all, God sees it all. Sometimes God puts us to test, to know how strong we can stay to know if we will fall or we will stand during that difficult times so he also spoke about you know you know giving charity giving arms to people he spoke about you know acquiring knowledge he spoke about you getting to know your god you know why serving god you should not be distracted by ungodly things don't be distracted by ungodly things material things be it fun be it pathing lifestyle always put god first always remember that no matter how your day goes god should always be in your mind god should always be one of your priority every day of your life and he said there are some knowledge that you you acquire that it won't lead you to 
to the to a good path where there are some knowledge that will lead you to a good way to lead you aright so he said you we should be able to this you know differentiate between the good one and the bad one that will help us grow so he also spoke about you know when um things are happening on media we should not bad mouth you know the religion if you know that you don't have anything to say it's better to remain silent than you talking bad about the religion for example maybe a country is going through at times maybe there's war and if you know that your your own opinion will not matter you know that your own opinion does not make sense there's no need to add to the problem one has to be careful during these times you no know, when others the uh, bad news are going on, all these difficult times are going on on social media on you no know, concerning a particular country or countries and it's being aired on social media or it's been said on social media. One has to be careful on, on what you say, your opinion. You have to think it well before you, you know, point out your opinion about those matters. And he said that there's always hope for tomorrow, even though things are not going well, even though things are hard, even though you've been trying, you've been trying, you've been failing, you are not seeing, you know, you are not seeing progress yet. Doesn't mean things will not get better. It will get better. Just keep it your hope alive when there's life there's hope when there's hope there's life when you have hope for tomorrow then definitely you just need to keep trying just be prayerful you know keep trying if you see that okay this thing you're trying it does it is not working for you and you think okay your art is not into this particular work or job you can go for another one that makes life easy for you there's nothing easy out there per se but something that will make things kind of you know stress-free for you and something that you can the work that you can relate to you get it so i want us to keep up her life no matter the situation this was a powerful you know advice that is needed not only to muslims like i always say all these kind of videos does not apply to only muslims apply to everybody everybody because one way or the other was human beings have faced hard times before in their life there's no human being on this earth that's never faced that time there's nobody so this can keep you going when you listen to this you know advice it can be um, put it back on track it can keep you going it can you know make you know what to do at the right time that's a beautiful one beautiful video thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye